Hi there, my name is Aaron Landerman, and this is my Waldorf microwave. As you can see, the microwave seems to be under the impression that the first patch is called Aska, and the third patch is also called Aka, but also the something like that. Ah, so it looks like we have lost our memory here. Let's take it out and take a look inside. Let's see, unplug MIDI, unplug audio, I unplug power, give it a little push from behind. <laughs> that was not very elegant. Okay, come out of there. Just one screw. And it looks like I need to remove the top screws here on each side. Okay, while we have the lid off, let's take a look and see what we have. We have CEM3389. I think that's called something like a signal processor by CEM. That's a four-pole low-pass filter with resonance. And I think there's four voltage-controlled amplifiers. We have eight of those, one for each of the eight voices in the microwave. Let's see, next to each one, we also have a 4558 op amp with bipolar inputs. Now let's see, over here we have a bunch of CEM5508 chips. What are those? Ah, those are octal sample and holds. Those are next to a bunch of TLO84 op amps with JFET inputs, high impedance inputs. Over here, what do we see? Ah, uh, AD7545. Those are 12 bit DACs, all next to some more 4558 op amps. Let's see, all of this is the analog stuff. Here's a bunch of trim pots, that's kind of fun. Let's see. Over here we have the digital board. Uh, what is this? This guy here is an ASIC, so this is a Waldorf specific chip. And if it dies, you are probably in a world of hurt. Here's the 68000 microprocessor, as used in the original Atari ST, the Macintosh, I think the Insonic EPS, a whole bunch of stuff in the 80s had a 68000 processor in it. Let's see, 6850, that's a UART, Universal Asynchronous Receive Transmit that turns parallel data into serial and serial data into parallel. It's probably handling MIDI duties, being close to the MIDI jacks. And there should be an optocoupler. Let's see. Sharp PC900V. Okay, there's our optocoupler. Let's see, down here, what do we have? 74, okay, we have some glue logic in here. Over here we have, ah, here's our operating system. 1.25. Apparently the latest is 2.0, so maybe I should check into that. Uh, what's this? Microwave B-card adapter. Hmm. So there's a little, little header here. Interesting. Okay, so there's where you plug in, plug in memory cards for it. This is the controller board for the LCD display. And over here we have our battery. So let's swap that out. That's a CR2032. Okay, we have a new battery in place. So it doesn't seem to be responding to MIDI data, but I think there's a factory reset procedure I need to do. All right, it says to get into service mode, hold the mode button when powering up and release immediately when the message, welcome to microwave is displayed. All right, so I'm going to flip the unit off, pull down the mode button. Entering this mode will destroy <laughs> all stored data. If you don't want to lose your data, blah, 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 blah. Okay, press the okay button. Okay, it says what the software version is. This is version 1.25. Apparently there is a newer version. Ah, and it's year, month, day, so it's May 2nd, 1991. All right, by pressing the mode button, each test routine can be directly selected. You have to repeatedly press the button to reach a certain test. Great, okay, press the mode button. 
First one is something about runtime. Don't think that's an accurate number of hours that it's been running. I'm not sure what that's actually trying to tell me. Doop. All right, so this test routine must only be done after exchanging the batteries since all system programming has been done prior. All right, so we have exchanged the batteries. Back up all the memory data. That's all a moot point now. Acknowledge the routine by pressing the OK button. OK. Uh, status, ICRT, question mark. I guess it says press OK. Oh, it's not telling me I press OK. It's, I'm pressing OK, but then it's telling me something is OK. OK, so sound RAM. This is the external right card test. It should probably complain about this, right? Because I don't have a card in the slot. It said ERR. It should complain about this too. Oh, actually, I guess it was happy about that. Oh, I need to press the mode button to go on to the next test. OK, next test, keyboard test. Press each button to watch a corresponding display message. So this shows me that these buttons work. Great. All right. So let's go on to the next test. This is the LED test. Okay, all of the LEDs work. I just figured while we're in the routine, we might as well see what it does. Press the mode button again for the MIDI test. Connect the MIDI in port to its own MIDI out port. Uh, okay. One moment. Okay, so I've hooked the MIDI input to the MIDI output. Let's press the OK button. Okay, I guess it's happy about that. It sent some data out of the out port into the in port, and it got the data back, so I guess it's happy. Press the mode button. All right, so now we're going to do the voice test. Press the OK button repeatedly to connect all eight voices sequentially to the left and right audio outputs. Voice of one through four will additionally be output at their respective single outputs, which I'm not bothering to check. Let's see, you should hear a sine wave of 123.5 hertz, right? Okay, this is disturbing. It appears to have hung on this test. Hmm. Okay, so I rebooted it in regular mode, and now indeed all of the patches are empty empty. They're just initialized to nothingness instead of initialized to garbage. But I don't know if you can hear, I'm clicking on my little MIDI controller here, and the little light is not coming on. And I just tried it on my Oberheim OBMX, and it's working fine sending MIDI to that. So, I'm disturbed. Whew, okay, I figured it out. That was nerve-wracking. So, it turns out that if you have this corrupted data kind of patch, the microwave doesn't want to respond to MIDI. So, I looked in the manual and went through the procedure of creating the initial patch and saving it. And then it will play. So, whew, okay. So the voice check routine and the service routines, that still hangs. That's a little disturbing, but it is making noise in regular mode. So now I'm going to try restoring some factory patches from SysX. Actually, before I do that, let me turn off the system and make sure this patch is still there. Powering down. Okay, that's a good sign. Okay, so I'm having trouble loading the patches over SysX. So this device number 255, I'm going to try to set that to zero and see if that helps. Okay, let's see what we have here. Yay!
So it looks like I've got patches. Okay, and then we're up into the card banks. Oh, okay, it works. Excellent.